Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through randomized MAC addresses like you get on phones and that. But not just what they're about and why they use them, but the details of what actually makes a MAC address a randomized MAC address so you can find them and see what structure they follow. So let's get into it. Now first of all, I'll just go through what I've got set up on the phone here, which is Graphene OS. So under privacy, you can see I've got use the device MAC because I want to find it easily in my packet captures. I'm not too worried about anything, so I use its actual MAC address. But you can have per network randomized, which means once it knows that network, it'll use the same random one for that network every time. Or you can use per connection, which will just make it random every single time, which is what this OS defaults to. But I want to keep it on device MAC for here. Now you can see currently my IP address is 10.131. But if I were to get rid of that, let's have a look. I'll change privacy, change it to something else, change around again, change back. You can see it up here mucking around. If I go back to it, 10.132. And you can see a problem. If you're using randomized MAC addresses, you could deplete your DHCP pool pretty quickly. There's ways around that, but uh, for now, just know that obviously it's a different MAC address from the DHCP server's point of view, so it gives it a new address. And that's about that. Now, when I changed those privacy settings just then, I was doing a packet capture as well, and you can see that it changed the MAC address over here. And I can tell that these two are random, and this is the real one. But I'll go into how I know that. Okay, now I'm going to do a capture on the wide network, just any old stuff that's going on. Some ARPs, some bit of this, bit of that. Okay, that'll do. And I'm just going to look at one of the unicast packets here. And it's not so much the packet I'm looking at, but the frame. So if I go down to the Ethernet part here and see the destination, the destination MAC is the first thing on here. So when it's an Ethernet frame, the first thing here is the destination. And you can see the first half, obviously, is the OUI. But these two bits have special meaning here. So what I'll do is over here, I'll just represent this as bits to make it a bit clearer. Now these eight bits here, represented by this byte here, 00101100, that's the first byte. Now the least significant bits, these two down the bottom here, have special meaning in their own right. They actually mean something. So let's start with the lowest here. So that says if it's an individual address, meaning is it is a group address or is it unicast? Now this was unicast traffic, so you can see that's unicast. So that, that bit here will be a zero. And the other one is if it's globally unique or not. So this basically says, what it says factory default, that's not 100% accurate, but it's good enough. So it means that that's the address of an actual device, usually. So basically, it's not a group bit, it's just a unicast bit. So that means it's a factory unicast, and yeah, that's what it is. It's from a device here. But if I go to something like an ARP, which is broadcast, it's going to a broadcast. This address here, it says it's a group address, because that bit is set you know that it's going to multiple, it's not just going to a single device. And the second bit up here saying, is it locally administered? Yes, it is. So it's not a factory default device. There's no factory um, MAC address is gonna have a one here. So they're the two important things. So if you look at any, let's go to a multicast packet here. IPv6, there you go, IPv6. They all start with 3333 for the MAC addresses of IPv6 multicast. And you can see that three, the number three, has one one. So I'll just jog your memory on some binary here. Right, so here's some binary values. You can see that if the lower two bits are one and one, like they are here, then that equates to a three, which is why it's got a three up here, three, 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 three. Now, if I go to an IPv4 multicast address, if I can find one. In fact, I'll just do a new packet capture where I've got lots of multicasts going on. There we go. So there's some multicast. You can see its addresses start with 01005E. That's for IPv4 multicast. Now as part of that, you can see the first byte here has zero one on it. So one is the group group address. That's what makes dumb switches forwarded out of every port. They just look at that and say, oh, yep, it's a group address, send it out with no, no further thinking involved. But you can see this is zero, sort of implying that it's factory default, but it's not. There's no factory card that's gonna have that for a MAC address, but because it's a defined MAC address, they're calling it factory default. But anyway, they're the main two. Okay, now here I've got a Wi-Fi packet capture of some random MAC addresses doing probes. So let's have a look. If I go to a transmitter address, you can see it got A2 for the first byte, which over here is here. And you can see the least significant bits are one and zero. So I'll go back to the other packet capture because this shows it as part of the ethernet. One up here would mean that it's not factory and zero here would mean it's not group. So once again, I'll just do any old capture just to grab something. And you can see that for a unicast address, as long as this bit here is zero, it's a unicast address. And if this is set to one, then it means it's not a factory default. So this is a factory default one here because 
it's zero. Like this is the card's actual MAC address. But if it's an app or something, it'll be set to one. So if I go back to the randomized MAC addresses, what I want to have is basically, I want it to have a one here. Let's have a look. One here to say that it is locally administered. And I want a zero here to say that it's an individual address. So if I go back to that, you can see what's actually here. A one, a one there and a zero there. Now back on the DHCP capture, if I look at one of the source addresses coming from it there on the wired side, because I could capture it there and show it here, the destination for the reply would be here. So you can see exactly that. It's locally administered, which means it's not the factory default. And this bit's zero, which means it's a unicast individual address. So basically, that's a long way of saying that for it to be a randomized MAC address and follow the rules for that, this bit has to be one and this bit has to be zero. So if we go back here, you can see values that have a one and zero at the end is two, six, A and E. So if you go back here, what you can see in the first byte is if it's got a two or an E or an, not eight, because that was unicast, remember? And eight has zero, zero down there, so that's not it. So you know that's the phone's real MAC address. But these, you can tell straight away because that's a two and that's an E, that they're randomized MAC addresses. But that's why they're randomized MAC addresses, because they follow these rules for these bits here. Right, so now I'm just running some pings from this computer to the phone, which is on the same VLAN, and the phone's using a randomized MAC address. So if I do a TCP dump for ICMP, you'll see, among other things, you'll see that ping. But I might see other stuff too. In fact, I will, because I've got some other stuff set in the background, which will come through now and again. It'll be ICMP messages. But let's say I just want to get randomized MAC addresses. So I do a packet capture filter, and I do something like, let's say Ether, so Ethernet packets, and I want the first byte. So I'm looking at the first byte, and I want to mask that with three. Now three means just these two bits here. So basically it's saying the first byte, just look at the lower two bits here. And I want to make sure they equal two. So I'll have to put a thing around that, otherwise I get upset. So that three there means I'm masking just for those two bits. They're the only ones I'm looking for. And I, want to, I only want to match it if they equal two, which is one zero. So basically I'm looking at the lowest two bits to see if they are one zero. So if I do that, you see the echo request, but I don't see the reply. Now, the reason I don't see the reply is because the destination is what that's looking at. So let's just pick one here. Now that first byte is because the first six bytes of this are the destination Mac. So the destination Mac is these six bytes here. If I want to look at the source Mac, I'm going to have to look over here, which is from the seventh byte, so byte number six. So if I just change that to start at byte six, what you'll see is the request. Not the reply, sorry, fuck, the requests are up here. So that's that. If you want to see both of them, just add them both. So that and, you know, the same thing that I had a second ago, which was zero. So zero and six. And so now I'll just see, oh, sorry, sorry, don't listen to me. They never go for going to be that, are they? So you go, or oh, that or that. Okay. Now in Wireshark, I can do the same kind of thing. This capture filter would be the same as the TCP dump filter, but I'm just going to get all ICMP for now. And I'm going to narrow it down as a display filter. So here where you just have I don't know, your destination Mac, you can have that as a field. So apply it, the whole thing. But really what I, what I want to do is Ethernet address from byte zero, same kind of thing as before, and hex zero three equals hex zero two. And you'll see it there. Now you can see currently my IP address is 10.131. But if I were to get rid of that, let's have a look. I'll change privacy, change it to something else, change around again, 10.132. And you can see a problem. If you're using randomized MAC addresses, you could deplete your DHCP pool pretty quickly. There's ways around that, but uh, for now, just know that obviously it's a different MAC address from the DHCP service point of view, so it gives it a new address. Now, if I ping it with that new address, you'll see the ping is coming up down here, and that's all good and well. But if I change it to its device's real address, it's now got 10.10. .10. So if I ping that, sure, I can ping it, but nothing's coming up from the display filter because I'm only looking for randomized MAC addresses. So that's that. All right, so that's how a randomized MAC address is made. And it's not completely random, it does follow those rules. But really all you have to do is look at the first byte and see if it's a 2, 6, A or E, and you know it's a randomized MAC address. Anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.